Hi, I'm Steve with Brownells, and with me is Bobby Tyler of Tyler Gunworks in Texas. And today we want to talk about firearms restoration. Hey, Bobby, we've got a couple examples here, and I wanted to talk about restoration versus rebluing or whatever some people call restoration. Good question. Yeah. So I like to say rebluing is just putting blue back on one. Mm -hmm. Firearm restoration is taking one that looks something like this, where you have use, wear and tear. There, there's, there's history here. So I also take a minute and I always say, is, is there anything that I'm gonna destroy value on right. by rebluing it? Everything has a point where it crosses over. Sure. And so in my opinion, this one here is, is a candidate. Right. To, that's, to take and restore. That's a nice example of a gun that was made in large enough quantities and is good enough quality to where it's worth restoring, but it's not so rare that you can't restore it. Absolutely. So what we do is we disassemble the revolver completely down, everything that will come off of it, remove the barrel, everything, and we hand polish everything out right. in order to make sure that we don't take the lettering, wash out the lettering, the roll marks, the edges, where the edges come down, everything's a sharp edge and it's there for a reason. Right. And, and a so, Smith & Wesson double action revolver is probably one of the toughest guns to do right. I would say it's probably the toughest revolver, probably the toughest firearm on the market to, to polish correctly. I know, they, they take a lot of time. And if you'll notice, um, if, you'll, if you'll notice this Model 19, so this is one that we did recently restore. That, that's been completely redone. It has. We restored it. We did put ivory on it just because we wanted to, mm -hmm. but this is one. And if you'll notice, the lettering, the Smith & Wesson roll mark, um, if you'll, you'll notice that it's as crisp and clear as it was the day it left right. Springfield. The nice thing about Smiths is they do make it deep enough to where you can go over it, Correct. take off the old Correct. finish, smooth out the pitting, and still have good markings. So in this one, what we did is we evaluated it. It was something uh, similar, probably not as much finish gone as that one. Mm -hmm. This one had a place on the back here where somebody had sanded a little. Okay. And so we went ahead and stripped it down, and we decided what finish we're going to go back with, and we're going to go back as close to factory as possible. So. You don't want to over polish, you don't want to under polish. Right. There's kind of a happy medium. And if you'll notice the, the hammer and trigger, they were originally color cased. Yes. So we recolor cased the hammer and trigger and we did what I call just a factory restoration to bring this back to the day if you would have walked into Smith & Wesson, mm -hmm. picked one up in 1981, yeah. you could walk out today with it the same. And they, when they were brand new, they did look just beautiful. In the in the box, Just so fantastic finish. in my opinion, there's a strong difference between rebluing and restoration. Mm -hmm. And when you have that discussion with your gunsmith, the first thing I would ask them is, is this hand polished, or are you going to buff this and throw throw a little blue on it? Right, right. And some guns, maybe that's the way to go. Either a, a buffed finish or a sandblast finish. If it's a hundred and fifty dollar revolver, you don't want somebody to hand polish on that for a week to get it right. Correct. So. You got to watch what you're doing. And some guns shouldn't be touched. Um, and if it's a one of a kind, or if it's a gun that belonged to a famous person, has a provenance of some kind, you got to really be careful there. I recently wrote an article that was on this topic and it, I called it the great debate. Mm -hmm. And after people reading it, they said, I thought you were in the fire and refinishing business. I said, I am, but I am a traditionalist at heart. Right. And being part of the industry, you know, you have a little responsibility not Absolutely. to do any harm. Absolutely. But you can take this and make it look like this and still do it with class. Right. And hopefully not uh, put the owner's initials in gold or something Absolutely. in there. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely, you know. yeah. I Good. mean, for a, for a common gun, no problem. But if it's a rarity, you don't want to personalize it too much. Exactly. So there's a lot to it. And uh, we're fortunate to have you here to guide us through it. Well, thank you. Pleasure if, to be here. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We'd like to hear from you on some restorations you've had done or are thinking of having redone. Till next time, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.